Hello and welcome to another Beaver DIY day. As per your requests, we're making the bubbler. As per your requests, the bubbler. What is a bubbler? What is it used for? And how do you make one? You have your ferment chamber over here. Inside of your ferment chamber, you have your ferment or your brew or whatever you want to call it. That has yeast in it and sugar that's creating alcohol and CO2. So the CO2 needs to escape. You do not want to build a bomb. So you want your CO2 to escape out of the top, but you don't want anything else to sneak its way into your ferment chamber, bacteria, um, coronavirus, <laughs> I'm joking, or anything like that to sneak in to your chamber and then cause your whole batch to be ruined. How do you prevent that? You use a bubbler. The bubbler is quite simply put a airlock or a stopper that prevents anything from coming back in and only allows stuff to go back out. There's two types of bubblers. Bubbler number one is a really simple and a quick one to do and it's a favorite among a lot of people. You have a loose fitting lid on a jar or a bottle or anything of that kind. You fill that jar or bottle, whether it's a Coke bottle or a mason jar or a mayonnaise jar, doesn't matter, with water. The water, preferably, needs to be clean, meaning boil it in the kettle, allow it to cool down to room temperature, that will just remove any nasties in the water that you don't want to make its way back into the pipe. Um, so, you have your water, you have a pipe that runs from the one container to the other container. You have an airtight seal on the top of your vessel. So if you have a cooler box, make sure the lid is nice down and tight and sealed around the edges and you drill a hole in the top allowing the CO2 to come out uh, and your bubbler to fit in. So what will happen is the CO2, CO2 will rise up in the tube, will make its way all the way past the pipe and everything and then into the water. Then the CO2 will then bubble out and evaporate out of the top. That's bubbler number one. Bubbler number two, my personal favorite because it takes up less space and you don't have to find a place to put it, especially me with my carboy. Um, I don't have a table or anything nearby to put the, the jar or the bottle or whatever on, so I prefer to use the bubbler that sits on the top. So to make my bubbler, all I have is a bottle or a, a tin or a, any vessel of some kind. I prefer to have it clear so I can see the bubbler working, but it doesn't need to be clear. You can use a plastic cup or a sippy cup or anything like that that can fit onto the top um, that you can drill a hole into and make your bubbler to make an airtight seal. So what you want is once again an airtight seal on the top of your uh, ferment chamber. You want a tube or a pipe of some kind that enters into your ferment chamber, not touching the brew or the liquid at the bottom, just hovering in midair there. And then you have a pipe that goes in. So one single thin little pipe that goes into your chamber over there. Then you have another loose fitting vessel, chamber, uh, can, or croppy, or whatever you want to call it, on the inside there. And then you fill this up once again, just below the pipe with water. So once again, normal boiled kettle water, uh, allowed to cool down, will work just fine. What will happen is CO2 once again will be generated, it will move up the pipe, it will fill up this little cup here, this cup will then rise up, as it rises up the CO2 will bubble out the bottom. 
as in the video that you'll see in the top left hand corner here right now. You'll see the bubbler working. Okay, now the part that you've all been waiting for. Less of me jabbering, more of me building. Let's get into the first airlock. First airlock is a really simple version of a bubbler or a bubbler that sits on the top of a fermenter. It is a standard jar. I'm using a plastic Nola mayonnaise jar with a plastic lid making it nice and easy to work with and a tube, a normal plastic tube that I got from a hardware or a pet shop, doesn't matter. It's just a normal clear plastic tube. You can use other tubes, but clear makes it nice. So you can see stuff happening and all that other stuff. And a clear jar, just make it so you can actually see what's happening on the inside. What I have done to the Nola Mayonnaise to start off with is uh, I've removed this little foam insert on the inside. So by removing the foam insert, you prevent it from making an airtight seal on the top of the jar. Remember, you want an airtight seal at your fermenter, not on top of your jar. So, without the foam insert now and a, just a loose fit on the top here, so we don't tighten it all the way, just loose, you can actually see the air can escape out of it. So what that will help in the process is the CO2 can escape, but nothing can fall in bugs or anything like that in your water. So yeah, so what you'll be needing to make this is uh, something to make a hole with. So you can use a drill or you can use the method that I prefer to use. The reason why I prefer this method is it just gives you a little bit cleaner hole and it buffers up the ends of the plastic a little bit. I'll show you some close-up photos of that uh, once it's done. So what I'll be using is a blowtorch and a drill bit. Doesn't need to be a specific drill bit, any drill bit will do. So we get our flame going, we get our jar in a comfortable position, get our drill bit clamped into our uh, pliers or if you want to wear gloves you can wear gloves and then all we're going to do is get our drill bit nice and hot doesn't need to be glowing red or anything just hot careful the drill bit's still hot so find a nice place to put it down. That's why I'm working outside as well. Nice ventilated area. That's the burning smell of plastic. So I'll put my drill bit down there. Don't worry, you can use that drill bit again. It's not ruined. Next up, you need to fit your hose into the top of your airlock. And that's why I prefer to use a melt-in method that allows my hose to fit nice and tight into the jar. So we'll fit our hose into our jar about two thirds of the way down. Then we will fill our jar with water to about a third. We're gonna add our pipe in now what's going to happen is we have a bubbler effect see it works so that is bubbler number one Mayonnaise jar, hole in the lid, pipe, water. Quick, simple, easy. Now my preferred bubbler, what you're gonna be needing is a spice bottle, a 
plastic bottle of any kind. I prefer to use these lovely little spice bottles. You can remove the label if you want to. Get it nice and clean. But, uh, it's not necessary. Yeah, you're gonna need to keep the lid. You're gonna need something, plastic, that will fit into the opening in the top. So this is a FF Vescent, FF Vescent Flu C or whatever you call it. A uh, little jar so a barocca or anything like that will work as long as it fits into the top of your plastic spice bottle. If you want to see what's happening on the inside and all that other stuff you can get something like this from the sweet store. This is a little plastic tube um, so you can actually see what's going on in the inside. You also need a straw. I have these nice hard straws that I bought from a plastic, uh, plastic store like this pack or something like that. So this little plastic straw there um, is also needed. You'll need a drill bit the size of the straw, but slightly smaller, not exactly the size of the straw, just slightly smaller. Um, you will need a knife and some thread tape. I prefer to use the thick thread tape made by Titan. It is uh, the thicker version of your normal thread tape. It does give you a bit more meat to the tape. So, last but not least, you will need a gland. So the gland is a normal electric gland that you get from the hardware store or the electrical supplier. It has a little rubber grommet on the inside. Right there, there's a little rubber grommet. So this little rubber grommet that we have on the inside here will seal onto our straw and yeah simple so let's get started first off we need to make a hole again and this is the most complicated part of the whole exercise making the hole blow torch on roll it in the flame Boom. Now it's a hole. Once again, your drill bit's hot. Put it somewhere so you don't burn yourself. Next up, your straw. So once again, your straw will fit in to your jar. And yeah, that's pretty much the bubbler almost finished. I prefer to use a little bit of thread tape. First cut my straw down to size. So it doesn't matter what size you cut your straw to, as long as it's long enough to actually enter into the jar and slip onto your gland. Next up, I'm going to take a little bit of thread tape. Wrap it around the straw. Push it in and then just force it into the hole, allowing the thread tape to bundle up on the bottom there. So you can see that the thread tape is bundled up on the bottom. By doing that, you create a watertight seal. Now with any better luck, I don't pour it into the pipe, pour it on along the side there, you will see there's no water leaking out and you have a nice watertight seal. Now for the next part, the bubbler part, let's just put that into there, I'm going to be using my Flu jar. I'm going to measure it about 
I would say third, just between a third and a half of the height of the little column, just longer than what your straw is sticking out of the top there. Take it and score it, score it. If you have a hacksaw, you can use a hacksaw. There we go. There's a little bubbler cap. There's a bubbler. It drops in there. Floats on top. So what's going to happen now? We're going to take our gland. We're going to put our gland over the bottom here like this. We're going to tighten it all up. Nice and tight. Press it down one last time. And to demonstrate how it works, I have a bottle that I've just taken out of the garage. That fits into the top there, like that. And now, once you squeeze on your bubbler, you see it creates little bubbler popping up and down uh, and allowing the CO2 to escape. Now we need to prevent anything from coming into the top here and that's why I said keep your lid. Take your spice lid like this. All you're going to do is you're going to create a space for the air to escape. So once again take your knife and just cut along the top end edge of so don't cut the whole thing off leave a little bit of a lip there for this lid to click onto. So there we go. Now your lid allows air to come through. So oh, quick, simple. That goes onto the top. Make a quick little twist. And now you have a bubble. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Instagram. If you want me to do anything else or anything else that you need some clarity on, please drop it down in the comments. I will be glad to assist. Any ideas or anything that you want me to try out, please let me know. Thank you very much again for watching. Have a lucky day.